We're the Con Guys, and this is the Con Guy Show, coming to you straight from the nerdy heart of Hollywood, California. And this is Jim with theconguy.com. She's been here with theconguy.com. Katie here, aka the Con Girl. Zordon did not want five teenagers with attitude. My name is Derek Sam. I'm Danae Sams, and that's my brother. We are your home for news opinions, and interviews from the world of Comic-Cons and fandoms, your ultimate insiders for all things San Diego Comic-Con is next week, and this is part two of our Con Guy show, the best, coolest, most interesting panels, SDC 2023, and I just want to give you a little bit of an introduction. We're going to start it. We had to split this podcast into two parts because we had so much information. I am James D. Fry on Instagram. I'm at theconguy.com, and we are about to rejoin our podcast with writer-comedian Danae Sams, actress, producer, Angela Relucio, writer professor tom parham and myself i'm a writer jim fry i am like I said the editor-in-chief here on the conguy.com so we're going to rejoin our our podcast and talk about um friday saturday and sunday the best panels to see there and then we have a, a short interview with jeff gund of influence infilist um up here in los angeles he's about hit the big industry party he has to kick off comic-con week before we do though i just want to in Make sure I remind everybody, if you get a chance, check out our po- our um, podcast is hosting the 30th anniversary, the official 30th anniversary of the Power Rangers. It's going to be on Thursday, July 20th at 6.45 p.m. in room 6A inside the convention center. This is part of Comic-Con. We're going to have Patrick David, Roger Velasco, Davi Santos, Christopher Kim and Lee, Cameron Gibo, Sealand Ward, Blake Foster, Dwayne Cameron, um, Walter Jones, and a couple more. But right now you're looking at the those who will be afterwards. They're going to be going over to the Nostalgia Nightlife, the 90s TV um, party. It's going to be really cool. It's over at the party headquarters, Comic-Con at Park Nightclub. It's put on by XLE Entertainment. I just want to remind everybody that's where we will be after our podcast. I keep on saying podcast. That's where we're going to be after our panel. So it's going to be a great time. Again, get over there, get your stuff from XLE Entertainment. Go buy your tickets now. It's going to be a great time. Come party with the Power Rangers, you guys. Um, I guess it, you know, if you if you're a Power Rangers fan, no no better place than with uh to, power, to get up close with the Power Rangers and then the panel we're having at 645 room 6A. We're going to have 10 Power Rangers, maybe 11, maybe more. Uh, some surprises on there. Ben Ben Cleaver's going to be moderating. He's, uh, you know, you see him on the podcast here all the time. He does a great job moderating the panel. And then we're going to head over to the after party. It's going to be the big 90s nostalgia after party afterwards. Come party with the Power Rangers. It's going to be a lot of time. Anyways, that's uh, all I have for you right now. Let's go ahead and join the podcast already in session. I'm going to yeah. um who wants to jump into Friday? Go ahead, Angela, because you had some Friday stuff you started talking about. Let's go ahead and see what you looked at for Friday. Um, well, on Friday, we have at, let me see what I wrote, what time it was. Um, Friday, 10 a.m. to 1.15, One Ring, The Quest for Bilbo's Secret. <laughs> I'm a Lord of the Rings fan. I will go to all of these. So I, I'm not even sure what's going to happen there, but, you know, they had me at Shire and Hobbits. So um, <laughs> go. I'm going to check that out. That's okay. So that's on Friday. We also have what I talked about was the Walking Dead universe um, that AMC is putting on. Yep. Um, and I think those were the two that I like that I put in my on um, the app. You know what I mean? As yep as go check it check it out i'll probably peruse the schedule one more time because they put on a lot of programming i mean it is impressive that they're like five six seven at any given time slot yeah and sometimes you want to go to both and you have that ability you can pop in and out of the ballrooms right so you can do half of one the second half of another a lot of flexibility there uh and that's sort of what i i I do i panel hop sometimes yeah so there's one that we missed on um 
Thursday. I just want to bring it up. But, it's a big one. It's in Hall H. It's the Paramount Pictures T Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant mm. Mayhem. Um, it Do says you think anybody's going to actually be there for that, though? It says discussing with filmmakers and footage. So I don't know who's going to be there, but isn't yeah, it a, isn't it an animated film? It is an animated film, but if I mean, the thing is, animated animation does use SAG after actors. Yeah. So and if they're striking and they say don't go to panels, the the producer is Seth Seth uh, Seth, Seth Rogen. Seth Rogen. Mm. So he's there on behalf as as a producer, not as a writer. I don't know how that works. I don't know how that works. So well, we'll he's see. he's he's a producer, not a writer. So yeah. They also the, the cast of Jury Duty. Have you guys seen Jury Duty on Amazon? Oh my gosh, so, so good! I, I did. I did put that on my schedule. I did put that on my schedule as well. The jury duty, the, the one guy who didn't know about it is, is I think, on the panel, which makes sense because I don't think he's... He's not a, He's a regular guy. He's a regular guy. <laughs> he's been guy. Yeah. <laughs> it's just going to be him. That's the big one. It's just going to be him. He's a star. That's right. All right. Anything else before... Okay, Thursday. I, hey, Danae, I would love to know if there's... Any, I'm sorry, on Friday, is there anything that jumped out at you on Friday? Um, I don't know. I think I already talked. Yes, I accidentally mentioned the Friday ones when you asked oh, me about okay. Thursday. The I got them all mixed up. I think that's when Bob's Burgers is. Is actually it is. Friday. That's the day that you wait in line out at the 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 ballroom, the Hilton Indigo Ballroom. All yep. in a, and you pray for good weather because it's <laughs> either super hot or super cold out there. Tom and Tom, make sure we don't miss the panels that you actually are participating in. Yes. Um, so the one I'm looking forward to on fr Friday are uh, are the first one is the black panel, and mm -hmm. it's been going for a while. But it's basically African American creators of uh, comics, TV, film, talking about unique issues, and it's always very lively and interesting to see what's kind of in the in the zeitgeist. <laughs> um, Do you know where it's, they're having that panel? I don't know. I just closed that window. Oh, my, no worries. No worries. We can find it. Since we're using my bandwidth for this thing, <laughs> I'm having to use uh, 5G for my iPhone to screen. And then um, I think there is a Roddenberry panel on Friday that I'm interested in. Yeah. Well. Den of Geek and Roddenberry Entertainment present Does It Fly? Mm -hmm. And of course, my browser is taking forever to open up. But I'm interested in that. Uh, I'm on a panel in the afternoon, a uh, late afternoon on Friday, called uh, "The Power of Color: Colon Race Swapping," and uh, started a couple years ago dealing with issues um, of representation. But specifically, there's sometimes surprising pushback on gender flipping, race swapping, legacy characters. Yeah. For example, and everybody's not always in favor of it. Uh, a friend of mine, I won't name him because I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to call him out, but he works in comics and has done some high profile projects and he's not a fan of it. And I'm like, dude, back when these characters were created, there were no, there was no color behind the scenes. So everybody was Anglo. Well, I Why do have to, Tom, I'm going to, I got to jump in on the other, sort of the other side. I'm not always a fan of it. The, the race swapping is less problematic, I think, but I don't like, I think it's lazy just to say, here's your characters. You grew up with these heroes. We're going to make, turn them into to heroines just because we can't. I, I just sometimes think that's lazy writing. The one exception, oh my gosh, the new Starbuck from the new Battlestar Galactic. I was going to say, you better make an exception. For, what, what, it was the best gender swap that's ever happened. Let's just what, put it that what, way. What, one of the funny comments from back when, uh, actually Kevin Grazier, who was the science advisor for the show, said, you know, classic Battlestar Galactica, fans wrote Starbuck Apollo slash fiction. New Battlestar Galactica, the writers write <laughs> Apollo Starbuck. Have they ever done Batman and Robin where Robin was female? Uh, have you read Dark Knight Returns by Frank Miller? Okay, I guess that the answer is yes, because I'd be interested in, in seeing that take on that. And, and Stephanie Brown had a stint as Robin, so okay, you, it's just still canon. So there have been female Robins. Uh, Titans season four, they made um, they made Tim Drake black, or sorry, they made Tim Tim Drake ethnic. 
remind me what his character is. Tim Drake was the first Robin to have his own comic book. He's the one who replaced Jason Todd after Jason Todd died. Okay. Yeah. And then, you know, in Titans fashion, one of my former students, RC uh, Ryan Clem Barnes, says that uh, Max's Titans was the mashup of Super Friends and <laughs> Dark Knight Returns that nobody ever asked for. <laughs> Let me ask you here's a question that I would love to ask. By the way, I'm throwing out as devil's advocate, but also because I'm interested. One of the pushback, and we don't have time to talk the panel too much tonight was but what do you think of the the i hate to say argument but the I, the idea put forth that like hey let's create some new characters of color or some new characters of, of, of different genders like you know do you do you think there is any bit of the laziness factor in the fact that hey why can't we create great new characters like it we created a miles morales fantastic character but it's it's not black peter parker it's a new character that peter but, it's, but it's still a new it's a new character inhabiting an established ip hero okay and yeah. so and you know and some people aren't hip to that um my very first comic-con in 86 when i was stationed in san diego and would beat feet to the uh to the Civic Center, because there was no comic. I remember that. Here. I never went, but I heard about in. it. But I had a conversation with Paul Levitz, who was, I think, the executive editor of DC back then. And post-crisis, what they were about was, we want to create new versions of legacy characters. And so I don't have a problem with creating a new version of a legacy character where that, that new version is either a woman or an ethnic minority. But there are people who don't like that either. So, you know, and it's really hard to create a brand new character out of whole cloth and have that character succeed. It is. I, I agree. It's kind of like, it, it's kind of, I don't know. It's kind of like saying, hey, go create a new Star Wars movie. Make it as popular as the first one. I, I, I you know, sometimes you just, the, the, a time and a place of a character and a, and a film and a franchise and a, a brand starts when it starts and it's the magic of that moment. So I, I it's, I'm going to come to that panel. That's going to be an interesting panel. I can't wait to um to hear to hear about it. Anything else on Friday before we jump? Because I don't want to go. Yes, too long yes. Yeah. There's yeah. a two two fifteen a uh, two fifteen. Now I someone in the in, in watching, please comment because every time I say it one way, I get corrected to say it another way. Is it Weta Workshop or Weta Workshop? Go. Somebody uh -huh. typed it in. Weta. Is it Weta? Perfect. Well, Weta Workshop is celebrating, they're doing a panel called Celebrating 20 Years of Middle Earth. They always, always, they never cease to amaze me with their stuff. Whenever they, their booth on the floor, it's always like, the stuff that they create is just mind-blowing. So at 2.15, they have a panel on Friday that I'm going to um, pop into. Don't miss, I don't want to miss that. Mm -hmm. Um in the old days, Richard Taylor would actually be at the booth sometimes too. Because it's like, wow. oh, Richard Taylor, you're awesome. <laughs> that's that's so cool because their stuff is already impressive. But oh, and you've seen them; they do also like live demos of putting makeup on and just that they're everything that they do. I, I mean, it's just amazing. So I want to see what they're. I've never gone to an actual panel, but they have of theirs, and I'm going to see that uh, at two fifteen on Friday. There's just so much going on in Friday. This is why I said we have to pace, pace Friday, our energy, like the pace it out. Day, yeah, yeah. There's something you know. There's um. There was something about um. There's horror writers. Ask me anything with creators. Of, uh, you know, of Storm King comic, Storm King comics. Sometimes I just explore. Sometimes I don't even know what these comics are, and I want to wander in. And as Danae was saying, like walking the floor and just seeing what booths are out there. Those people will talk about the panels that they're doing, and after you meet them, you want to go and, and check out what they're doing, right? And can I follow on so. with a comment you just said about Storm King Comics? That's um, da, 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 that's the wife of John Carpenter. I, oh, oh, what's is her it? name again? I, we were just talking about her before. Let's see. Um, I'm hovering over the description right now. Sandy King Carpenter. Sandy King Carpenter. And it, she is going to be a special guest with their comics at Bernie's monster party on friday night so it's gonna be cool oh. and there's a is that very, what and there's a very going, you're going to that huh? director that i love very much who's going to be um letting us know about that so i can't wait john carpenter sorry keep going <laughs> nice 
Um, I don't know. I think there were more, but it's just so hard to narrow down because I, you guys, I will pack my, I'll pack my schedule up hour to hour and then I'll only go to like 7% of the things I plan to go to. Are you like that too? Is anyone else out there watching like so ambitious with their panel scheduling and then they just meet up with friends or they see an exciting cosplay or they follow an R2-D2 all over the floor for 30 minutes. <laughs> or, um, you know, at WonderCon, I was, there was, a, I think, a father and daughter who were doing, um, who were dressed as the characters from Encanto and they were singing We Don't Talk About Bruno. And, I, and, and, and they were doing that where all the um, Star Wars robots were. So it was just like, it was so weird, but I was fascinated for a full half hour. That's awesome. Easily. <laughs> Danae, is there any on Friday that we missed? There's a biggie. There is. I was looking at Saturday to get ready to talk about that one. All right. We're jumping in Saturday, but we have to mention Rick and Morty's 10th anniversary. It's going to be perhaps one of the biggest panels of the day. If you want to go see this panel, especially if they have any of the voice actors, but even if they don't, they'll probably, do you think Harmon, Harmon will probably uh, we'll see. We'll see. I don't know. Friends. because he's, He would be a part of SAG. He's a writer. Is the he's thing. a writer, but Thomas, do I, they let the writer, the showrunners act differently from than the, I don't know how that works. I don't know. Cause um, a lot you, of showrunners still write. You, and then, I mean, in the case of like Bob's burgers, um, yeah. Lauren Bouchard does voices just, yeah. um, I don't know. I really just don't know. Like, like we said, it's probably just going to be a, a table with a couple of producers. Who knows? A lot I'll of, be there. The, good. Yeah. All right. Because Jim, did you, did, Jim, did you, did you see, um, Jim? Because at five forty-five, they have a conversation with the cast and creator. Prime, Prime Video's Invincible, and that's Robert Robert Kirkman. But it's like, uh, you know, if you look at the cast, it's there's some big names on there. Yeah. So, uh, you know, including Walking Dead folks, right? So, like, I don't know what'll happen. What's cool is there's some that. actors that are showing up, but they're hidden in kind of obscure um, panels. Like David Arquette is showing up, and I found him earlier. He's in this panel that you would never. Th oh. Marty Croft, Sid and Marty Croft. Marty Croft panel. Yeah, because I guess he was a he a, a young actor on the show. Back in the, he's um, an alumni, an alumna from the show. Alumnus. Alumnus. I can't get, alumni, alumnus. Al, I, I, he's a dumb alum. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so he's going to be in the Sid and Marty Croft panel, which I thought was a big surprise. That's kind of cool. All right, let's jump into Saturday because we are kind of running out of time here. So Saturday, Saturday, who wants to start this? Hey, Tom, do you want I'm to start I'm excited Saturday? for everything oh, nope. Felicia Day is doing on Danae, Saturday. Danae, let's, yeah, let's let Danae go. Yeah. Yeah, because there's a spotlight on Felicia Day, and yep. um, it sounds like she's just going to be hanging out and talking to people, which um, it would be cool if more people take advantage of that, of not being there to promote a show, but there to just let fans ask questions that aren't about a show, but about everything else. For the record, I have heard... I got direct word from one of the studios that is not showing up that they may be there, but just not for a Hall H panel. And that this mm. type of activity that you see Felicia, Felicia Day doing will be common. So I think we're going to see more actors there, perhaps. Hanging out? Just like hanging, hanging out, but not at a panel. Even though Thomas sent us the note from the WGA where the WGA is actually encouraging folks, just don't even attend. We prefer you not even. Well, no, I don't know if it. I don't know if it said that. I think it said don't, don't promote on you know like 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 studio sponsored stuff. Yeah, maybe that was it. Yeah, kind. It's kind of like that. But if you're gonna go and just nerd out with the rest of us, I would be. That would be cool. I'm with Felicia, right. right, Danae? We'll just we'll just chill with her and all that. But <laughs> yeah, we'll just right, Danae, we'll go to Starbucks and hang out. What else yeah. today on Saturday did you see? Anything? I didn't hear what you said, Jim. What? Oh, anything else on Saturday before we throw it over to, to Thomas um, and I mean, Angela? that was the big one that was sticking out. Like, um, I would love to go to, like, um, Abbott Elementary and um, yeah. other panels like that. But, again, it's just. I'm um, telling you, up. <laughs> the principal on Abbott Elementary is the funniest character on television he's right now. So I, he's funny. Funny. Black he's great. Scott. She's great. What'd you I say, mean, Tom? Like she's like a black female Michael Scott. <laughs> I mean, she's better, <laughs> I, but she's she's sassy. I love yeah, her. Yeah, I feel like we are in a stage right now where comedy just isn't funny anymore, or it's trying too hard to like 
preach about something, which that's great. If you have ideas you want to share, you can do that. But if you get preachy, you're not going to really do it in a creative way anymore. And Abbott Elementary is a show that has just stayed so good. It is yeah. so it might be one of the funniest shows on TV right now. I think and so. when it does have a point, it doesn't shove it in your face. Yeah. It's in there um, just the right amount to get it across. <laughs> so I love out of it elementary as somebody who's very picky about comedy, go watch it. It's great. And Tom, That's you fine. had a comment about that. What were you going to say? Oh no. Just the thing about Abbott is um, Quinta Brunson who created the show First season was nominated for a producing Emmy, a writing Emmy, and an acting Emmy, and won the writing Emmy. And then Cheryl Lee Ralph, who plays the veteran teacher, won for Best Supporting. Love and it. she, I heard an interview with her on NPR. She was she almost quit acting a couple of years ago, and one of her fans wow. told her, "Know who you are." <laughs> She's amazing. I've 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 seen panels with her on it. And her, she's just magnetic when she speaks. I just want to invite her over so I can hear her talk and all day long. She's pushing 70 and looks amazing. Amazing. And she said it took, she says, it took me 40 years to become an overnight success or something like that. Yeah. She's, she's great because she's also I, a stage actor and wonderful. You know? she has Are you a, kidding me? Say what? Did you say 70? She's pushing seven. Something. Yeah. Oh, come on. Way to outer. No, that's way to outer. I said, but no, she's she's I, I, she's pretty deep. vocal about that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Danae? Thank you. Um, she just has a really great quote. Like that was like I was saying, the show is awesome, and it's got those really great heartfelt moments, as well as just moments where you have to pause it because you're laughing so hard. Um, <laughs> but her character is really good about being really funny, but also just being the wise teacher that is leading Quinta Bronson's character yep. along. And one of my favorite quotes ever, like I want to embroider it. I want to put it on a t-shirt. I want to hang it up where I can see it every day is um, she's talking about how awful parents can be when you're a teacher. And she says, some people have thrown dirt on my name. Others have brought flowers. It's all a garden to me. Oh man, that's so good. Love that. It's just like, that's, that's a, just such a great taste of how good that show is. So can't say it enough. Go watch Abbott Elementary. It's awesome. Cool. Agreed. Can I throw one in real quick because it's right at the beginning of the day on Saturday. Well, I don't know what time it is, but Lily, me and Lily, she's I'm watching the show tonight. We have a shared love of Snoopy and Charlie Brown. There's one called Snoopy Lives It Up. <laughs> Discover the <laughs> animated Peanuts content in the works at Wild Brain Studios for Apple TV Plus, the home of all Peanuts content. It includes a sneak peek of Camp Snoopy, the adventures of Snoopy and his Beagle Scouts at summer camp, and a whole lot more. Plus, there is an off-site, a Camp Snoopy off-site at Comic-Con this year. Man, my heart's full just thinking about it. You know, last year, oh, he's way over the closet. Where'd he go? No, right here. Wait, wait, wait. Last year, <laughs> I got it right here. This was my big get from Comic-Con, Charlie ah. Brown. And I remember, I remember telling you guys the story last year how um. I was having a stressful like Saturday or Sunday. I forgot what day it was. It was just super stressed where there's a, a lot of stuff was going wrong. I had to walk blocks and blocks back to the car. And I it just was like, I was having a good time, but just stressed. And I got into my car and, and in the seat belt in my car was Charlie Brown. I hadn't bought him. Somebody had bought me a gift and he was just there. And, and broke into your car? Huh? And it broke into your car? <laughs> it's Okay. And Jim started <laughs> crying just I, at the thought of Charlie Brown. Me and Charlie Brown, we're the same character, my friend. We are. You the need same to get person. a t-shirt. Well, dude. I, I did not know that happened to you last year. Yeah, crazy. It's well, I know who put it. Someone from the show, Luke, bought it for me. Him and Greg, and they knew that. Uh, they knew that I needed a little bit of that boost last year. That was so cool. All right, Danae, I, I'm sorry I interrupted you. Is there anything else on Saturday you'd like to call out? Um, no, that was about it. <laughs> All right, uh, let's go to um to, to Blurred, PhD, and then down, over to Angela. Um, things I've looked at for Saturday. Um, there yeah. is going to, there's supposed to be a, I, I hope it's a screening of the uh, Orphan Black Echoes pilot. I think there is. I've that, heard there is. That's the continuation with uh, Christian Ritter. Mm -hmm. So I, I loved Orphan Black. That cold opening, I think, is one of the best cold openings of any show any pilot in the past 25 years easy uh there's also um an event for space command which is a crowdfunded uh si series of sci-fi movies that uh 
why am I blanking on Mark's name? And I can Mark Zikri, Mark Zikri, uh, just to plug Mark a little bit. His Twilight Zone companion was one of the very first books that served as an episode guide behind the scenes look at a series. And since that, since then, it's become kind of a cottage in, industry. But I met him when I was in grad school and had sold my first script to the Family Channel. And it's just been cool to see him get these projects he's come up with off the ground. And the lead of that, I mean, he gets a lot of big sci-fi names to be back. Doug Jones has a role in it. Uh, the late Michelle Nichols has a role in it. Um, Tom, I'll get with you. I got invited. They're having a screening of that, of the, hmm. the, the film that you're talking about. Cool. Yeah. And then uh, Ethan McDowell, who has a small part in Are You There, God, It's Me, Margaret, is our lead hero. So I want to check that out because I help support that. Uh, also, oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, I heard it was one of the most successful fan supported films uh, to, in a, quite some time. And they're screening it, I think, at four o'clock that day. Um, also on Saturday, there's a couple of uh, t TV writing panels. One's called Inside the Inside the Writers Room, and I guess they might deal with. I couldn't get through the link on my mm -hmm. screen, but I think they're going to deal with some of the things. Some of the no, it's issues. some of the top showrunners in town are going to be discussing why the writers are on strike. It's going. It's if you're interested in what's happening to Hollywood right now, that it's the panel to go. It. It's showrunners who would normally be there, typically be there running big a show. Yeah, with big panels that we all want to see, they're going to be there. So that's that's a panel not to miss. I'll, I'll be at that. One. And then Me too. Uh, in, the, in the evening, uh, uh, my friend Bill Waters puts together a panel called Everyone's a Critic Being a Journalist in the Internet Age. So that's always an interesting. Uh, yeah, it. It's always interesting to see what comes up among us and then what what comes up from audience questions. So. And, and you might be a part of that panel. I've seen you on that panel before, Tom. That's a, that's a great panel. Just talking about how everybody in the internet age, everybody gets nasty and thinks think they have a right to tell creators how to make a show, you know, go. But I think Tom, you're, you're missing. There's a big panel at 130 in Hall H that you might be interested in. What is that the Star Trek universe panel? Yes. I don't think there's going to be anybody from the show here. The well, writers well, can't be here. I mean, what are they going to do? Show us some episodes? I mean, I guess they can show us some episodes. They're just going to put the empty chairs from the Enterprise up on the table. And <laughs> get them. They'll put a, oh. they'll put a, a blank view screen with Klingon battle cruisers and Romulan warbirds going across every few minutes. Yeah, it's if, if, if they're depending on how things go, and it it looks a little bleak, but still. Featuring exclusive content from Star Trek Discovery, Star Trek Lower Decks, which is Star Trek Str and Strange New Worlds. It doesn't say Picard. I haven't finished Picard yet, although... No, Picard's I, done. I know it's done, but I, I, I'm almost done with season two. I'm about to start season three because it's basically a next generation reunion, so I, I'm super excited about that. Oh, season three is pretty good. All right. All right. Any For you, Angela, anything on Saturday that we may have missed? Yeah, in fact, I'm sorry, we're backtracking. I missed on Friday night at 9.15, Dr. Horrible screening in horrible, oh, sorry, Dr. Horrible screening in horrible karaoke is what they call it. So, so Dr. Um, horrible, which is the result of the most pre the previous writer's uh, strike, actually. Yeah. <laughs> it, yeah, so funny enough, there it is. Okay, so sing, you sing along and they do the screening for Dr. Horrible's sing-along yeah. blog. So that's happening um, Friday night at 9.15. If anyone can can still stand up by the end of Friday night, uh, that's there. <laughs> Saturday, um, I know there are, I have friends who are, I, I want to come and support. So I, I'll be going into Tom's um, panels that you mentioned earlier, Tom, of course. Uh, Danae, thank you for the uh, um, Abbott Elementary heads up. And then at 345, I'm going to check out Anne Rice's interview with the Vampire Season yeah. 2. Like, like we all said, we don't know what's going to happen, but I love, 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 love the show and how clever they were at adapting like one of the few books I've ever read, which is <laughs> with a vampire. It is so good. So I, I am looking forward to that stuff that I'm a, a fan of. I'll go and check out. But I think on Saturday, I do have a, a number of friends. Um, in fact, if you're one of them watching um, or if you have a panel, please find me on socials and let me know what time and where so I could at least pop in, wave or show some support afterwards um, for Saturday. But I think that I, you know, I started to watch um, Demon Slayer. I think that, that there's a panel for 4, 4 p.m. for that, but I'm not I'm not fully immersed. I'm not very knowledgeable in anime. I think I just wanted to dip my toes in the water, so I may or may not movie. check that yeah. out. Yeah. 
or, or and TV show. Like there's just a ton and different okay. collections and whatnot. So um, that's for Saturday. I think there's a lot more, but I, those are the ones that um, stand out on the top of my head. Out, um, if depending on how the strike and again, we'll just put that in front of everything. Legendary entertainment has the 11 AM time slot in hall H it's usually the time slot that we would be expecting to see DC Warner Brothers, but the legendary is kind of they're part of DC Warner Brothers. They're they're one of the uh, they're not part of it. What are they? Oh wait, they're with they're, they're Universal a now. Company and legendary and legendary split from Warner's a couple years ago. They they were working with Universal. Universal. So they're the the rumor is they're bringing Dune Part Two, but are they also the ones who are doing the Godzilla verse? I think they are the Godzilla. I think they might have been. So, are they doing the show for Apple? That I don't know. The uh, the the Titans thing for Apple. Ooh, I don't know. But if Legendary comes, they'll bring Dune, and I know they're gonna because Godzilla is coming out next year. The new uh, Godzilla Kong, whatever. The in the Godzilla, insert- my friend. <laughs> what? What's that? The bad dubbing. Oh. <laughs> when, when they when they bought the original '50s Godzilla movies and they would, <laughs> which I watched, then... I watched this past uh, Saturday night. I watched the original King Kong from 1933, and so good. And, yes, and then the original Godzilla. I'm one of the guys. I'm a proponent. There's only been one movie where Godzilla's ever been scary. It's the original. All the rest of them, he's the friend of humanity and protecting us against monsters. I want a scary Godzilla. I am. <laughs> So Come you on, God- Godzilla the hero. You want Godzilla the the bad, dem- the, the, demo- the bad guy. I want the bad guy Godzilla, badass Godzilla, badzilla. And mm-hmm. love him or hate him, there is one big Hall H panel that's kind of closing out Hall H for the weekend. It's a uh, William Shatner, call me Bill. The Star Trek legend is on hand to discuss Legion M's new doc your documentary about him. You can call me Bill. And from recent comments from William Shatner. And people are reading into it maybe too much or who knows. He's he's made some comments about he realizes he will not be around much longer. Um, who knows what he's saying? I mean, he's 91 or 92. How old is he? He's, he's, he's up. in his 90s. So if you want to might... read, something, if you wanna read something depressing, Google his comments after he went up to space for real. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. It's like, wow. Okay. Let's finish off with Sunday. Sunday! Who's got something for Sunday? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Anybody? Anybody? Angela! I have something for Sunday, and it's my Sunday ritual every single year at Comic-Con. It's Buffy once more with feeling an interactive Weed Reverse musical. You sing along, you stand up, you do the dances to it, you just meld the words with the actors and uh, you know on the screen. I am a huge Buffy the Vampire Slayer fan for decades now right and it is so much fun i'm telling you that i i leave this panel or i leave this you know event kind of crying because i mean i've had an amazing by then i'd had an amazing four or five days at the convention i know that it's over i know people are starting to go home checking out of their hotels what what have you and there's that emotion of like oh no it's ending it's all ending and when's the next convention and you know because you just have such a special time at Comic Con that you don't want it to end, and when it's ending, all the emotions are there. So this is how I like to wrap up my Comic Con on Sundays at the 3 p.m. panel for for Buffy once more with feeling. That's awesome. I, I, I agree with you. Degrees of Geek, formerly known as Weedonopolis. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there you go. Yeah. By the way, let's talk. We what you say, Tom? Sponsored by Six Degrees of Geek, formerly known as Weedonopolis. Weedonopolis and Weedon. Con, which you know, the former Josh Whedon Con, they are sort of partners with the Con guy. We we are hosting some of the con, the um, Power Rangers at their table. They are now called Fandom Charities. Oh, they've um, always been Fandom Charities. Yeah, but they're they're kind of going by that now. Let's just say are, they're. Are you are you working with Marcia? Yeah. Do you know Marcia? I know Mar. I know Marcia. Yeah, uh, Marcia is great. I know Marcia very well. Make sure she knows that we're buds. I will. If, if Tom, find me. Let's go down and talk to her. She's fantastic, and um, she well, she partnered with us in WonderCon. We hosted all the Power Rangers at her table at one time, and she was great. And we're partnering with her to help promote her fall event, which is the 
the Buffy um, Homecoming. They're having it in, they're having it at, in the gym of the is it Torrance High School where they actually filmed the Buffy Homecoming. Yes, where exactly the where homecoming. they shot Sunny Sunnydale High High yeah. School. Yeah. Yes, the, the going down possibly. I'm, go go, I'm going. I'm going to the homecoming. What could possibly go wrong? That's going to be a good event <laughs> that we we want everything. Everybody should go to that. All right, I do have one on Sunday. I do want to call out. It is my panel that I am a part of. I have been asked to be on this panel. I've been part of it for a while now, but it used to be called "How to Have a Full Time Creative Career on a Part Time Schedule." But they've changed it, the focus a little bit. Now it's called yeah. "Success and Creativity." Um. It's the reimagined panel, which used to be called full-time creative work on a part-time schedule. It's uh, learn how to enhance your creative collaborations with practical advice on networking and communication, helping you unlock your creative potential and promoting effective resources, workflow, and time management. 33-0 lucky participants will have a chance to win a one-by Wacom tablet, which is, it's a tablet, courtesy Wacom. Wacom. So they're giving away 30 tablets, guys. That's ridiculous. Wow. They That's usually give away. It, it's pretty cool. It's going to be. Um, Those are well reviewed, too. Those they, ones. We, that panel is always packed. It's like the final panel of the show. And basically, it's people who come in and they want to meet together. And one of the big things is bring business cards, bring some way to network with people. Because for the first 10, 15 minutes of the panel, everybody stands up. You go, writers go find artists, artists find writers, find letterers, find, you know, public, find people who help you can put, uh, push your career forward because it is an industry focused panel on helping people who are creative in the industry to move forward. So it's great. What time is that, Jim? It's at four o'clock on, thank you for asking, four o'clock Sunday afternoon, room 24 ABC. Close out your Comic Con with a great way to get deeper involved anything else on sunday folks before we kind of end here my big thing on sunday is going down to the floor yep because everybody's trying to pack stuff up and that's Bargains. when you can do some some haggling typically <laughs> i mean danae knows what's up you know what's up till sunday to buy the big things you really want but sunday is sometimes when you can score some cool deals that's yep. that's my uh, main focus for Sunday is the floor. <laughs> I'll see you there. I'll see you there. We'll we'll bargain together. <laughs> no. Tom, anything on Sunday? Uh, something that struck my fancy. There is a Star Trek card season three behind the scenes hosted by Larry Nemechek. Larry oh, yeah? wrote the Star Trek Next Generation Companion, which ended up going through multiple revisions. Uh, but, but he's a friend I met when I first moved to LA back in '95. And uh, he's going to have uh, the science advisor for the show and some other behind the scenes people talking about stuff. So, yeah. Well, I do want everyone to know, like, even though it seems like we've just kind of skimmed the surface. Oh, that's because we have just skimmed the surface. We've talked about some of the larger panels, the TV panels. I mean, it's kind of what we know. We're A lot of us are actors, TV writers and, and in the business. So we kind of know those things. But also... Tom, especially, we know comic books, comic books we love. I encourage you folks, there were probably like 200 comic book specific panels happening this weekend at San Diego Comic-Con, whether it's how to get in, how to brainstorm, how to network, how to find artists. So many panels in that. The, the, uh, I think the Comic Connection is also happening. Um, our friend April Wallen, she runs it. It's a getting... It's kind of like speed dating for artists and writers of comic books to get together and meet each other and start projects together. So when you see those things, I'll try to call it out on the website. Um, anything else? Anything else that sticks out as far as programmatic? Programmatic. That yeah. Well, I was going to ask you. I, I was going to ask you, Jim. You mentioned uh, like the speed dating for like sort of networking, but yeah. back in the day, they used to have an actual speed dating for nerds like yeah. event and i couldn't quite find it if, any, if anyone knows about this or knows the organizer of it or knows if it's actually happening this year i'd be really curious hit me up on instagram let me know or in facebook i'm i'm curious about it asking and for a friend <laughs> <laughs> no, no i remember those days i remember that angela i think the speed dating used to take place off-site from san diego comic-con but if you go to like LA Comic Con, it's one of the panels. It's one of the events. I, I think they, huh. I, I think I, I could be 100% wrong, but you know. But, um, anyways, thank you, Andy. Andy, for watching tonight. William Shatner is 92. 
And yes, Lily, I did not. I can't. We cannot forget about Godzuki, the son of Godzilla. <laughs> who was the Who was the wife of Godzilla? I just want to. Anyways, let, let's just say we don't need to Mothra. Go there. It was an interspecies thing. Godzilla. <laughs> But anyways, I'm trying to see if there's any comments. We kind of we didn't really get to a lot of the comments tonight, guys, and I apologize for that. But we have had so much fun. Um, Tom, you are coming, right? Yeah, we gotta we gotta we gotta hook up. I I think you were here we'll last time. Plenty of time since I won't be in Hall H. <laughs> I know that's what I see. That's one of the pieces of pieces of advice and advice things that I keep telling people is like. We don't have to like cry about Hall H not being quite as robust this year. It's just going to change the way you do Comic Con. Instead of waiting for two days of hard <laughs> on the ground for two days and switching spots, to see and, a movie that turns out to be really terrible. <laughs> yeah, you can actually jump into some cool stuff. And next week our, is our final podcast. I don't know who will be with us, but we are going over all the last minute stuff, preparations, and offsites. There are a number of offsites that are happening, a number of parties. Um, who I think the Entertainment Weekly party is happening because Entertainment Weekly is here with two or three panels and a lot of folks to bring it down. So I, I could be wrong about that. But anyways, I am going to let us all say our goodbyes. And then I'm going to start our, we have like a, a last minute interview with, and I'm going to invite everyone to go with, um, I almost said James Gunn, with to, to, to Jeff Gunn. <laughs> I know. Thank you for correcting my spelling, Angela, earlier. I told You're him. welcome. It's Jeff Gunn. He's with InfoList here in Los Angeles. And for those who want to get super excited about going to Comic-Con before it starts, Los Angeles, I kind of, besides San Diego, LA is kind of like your Comic-Con central. There's It's the industry folks. A lot of the writers and artists live up here. And they all get together one week before Comic-Con at the pre-Comic-Con bash thrown by Jeff Gunn. If you want to go, it's a ticketed event. You must have a ticket. It's a basically invite only, but you can get an invitation by <laughs> buying a ticket. And today is the last day of some half-price discounted tickets to the event. So I encourage you guys to check it out. But before I start the video, because I'm not going to make you guys hang on here, but the, I'm going to watch it. I would love to know where people can find you guys online and um, give me like what the one thing you're most excited, excited for, for Comic-Con, Angela. Hi, uh, Angela Relucia. Find me on Instagram. Uh, I'm usually there, more there on than on Facebook, but it's at Angela Relucio. It's on your screen right there. And I'm excited to see all of your faces in real life and to meet the folks who are watching this tonight. Cause I just, I, I love to meet everybody and know what they're doing and, Show up and support and just have a great time. I'll see you all there in San Diego. Fantastic. Miss Danae. Well, I'm Danae Sams. You can find me um, on TikTok at DN or on TikTok at Danae Sams, on Instagram at D N A Y S. Um, like I said, it's been seven years since my last Comic Con. I'm excited for a lot. I think I'm most excited to see our friend Greg. Um, yeah. Greg's Greg coming back. One of my best friends, Tom, you know Greg. He's one of the greatest guys ever, and I cannot wait to see him and hang out with all of you guys. It's going to be awesome. Can I tell you something crazy? Greg sometimes says, Jim, I don't know how you keep up this pace because when he shows up here, he's always busy. He shows up at 4 o'clock this Saturday at 5.30. We're taking him to a murder mystery party where he has to dress up. <laughs> then on Sunday... Our friend Patty's got a bowling birthday party that goes until six, but we're cutting out to go to JT's birthday party, which starts at six. And then Monday, I'm going to force Greg to come into the podcast. Tuesday, we head down to Comic Con. He'll be dead by then, but I can't wait for Greg to get here. <laughs> All right, I'm so I, Greg's going to be so glad to hear you say that today. I I can't wait to see him. I'm so and, excited. Any comedy shows coming up that we need to know about? Um, check my Instagram. Um, oh. forgive me. I've been a little like, um, frazzled today, so I can't, I can't give you exact dates right now. I think, you know what? I shouldn't say it cause I'm going to, I'm going to get it wrong. Just check my Instagram and my TikTok <laughs> because oh. the accurate dates will be there. All right. So. And we do have to end cause we are way late. All right, Tom. Tom and if Tom's on the East coast where it's really late, tell us, tell people how to find you and what you're most excited. You to look for. On at Blurred PhD on Facebook, Instagram, Threads, and I'm still on Twitter, but I'm gonna be phasing out because it's too. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, and check out my monthly podcast, Screen Tom, which the links on Instagram. 
Screen time. Is it T-H-O-M? Of course it is. Screen time. All right. What are you most looking forward to? Seeing you guys. All right. I love it. All right, guys. (laughs) And James D. Fry of theconguy.com. Find us down there. But we have one more show next week, we think. But um, stick around. we got a really cool interview right here if you want to come to a really cool L.A. Comic-Con party happening on Thursday. All right. Bye, guys. Bye, everyone. It is the infolist.com pre Comic Con bash. It has become kind of a tradition here in the Los Angeles area. Welcome, Jeff Gunn from Infolist to the show. How are you doing, my friend? Oh, really good, really good. Great to be on the show with you, too. Um, and I'm, uh, yeah, I've been crazy busy getting ready, of course, for the pre Comic Con bash. Um, it's a lot of work, but it's my chance to get um, some truly amazing people together. We get some of the biggest names in the industry all in one place. And I think what's unique about my events is that it's actually rare to be be able to meet so many like big name people all in one place, unless you're at a major con or something like that. Um, and what's kind of better about my thing with all respect to the cons, which are awesome, um, is when you meet them there, like frequently there's like a long line of people, you get to meet them for five seconds. Hi, here's my card. What can you do for me? Okay, bye. Um, you know, and probably never hear from them again. Um, at my events, you actually get to hang out in a relaxed, chill atmosphere. You can talk to them for five minutes, five hours, you know, well, maybe four hours, depending how <laughs> long they're there. But, uh, um, and, uh, yeah, I actually make a real relationship because you're getting yeah. to know on a real, like kind of one, one-on-one basis. Well, um, Luke and I, Cheeseman and I, we've gone to your event these past few years. We've had the privilege of you know going in and we will attend with some folks and we always like to bring a group with us and i can just tell you it is the best way if people are into the comic-con spirit and you're heading down this is like one of the best ways to just kind of like get you jazzed up for the event but like you said you're able to meet so many people in such a condensed short amount of time it's pretty amazing i know luke you have some questions for him yeah just uh you know each year things have been like a little different and all that. Like what, what can people expect this year from this event? Uh, so this year we're doing it at a place called Academy LA, uh, which is kind of cool because it's um, has a big outdoor area. So it's kind of chill, relaxed patio kind of vibe. Um, but if you want to go in, there's also an indoor area where they've got like 360 like screens all over the ceiling on the walls, um, which is very comic-con friendly so we're gonna have some video <laughs> and cool graphics uh you know going all around you just to make sure you're dizzy all night um <laughs> we're gonna have some food trucks and stuff there so we'll be able to get some cool food and some drinks um so mm-hmm. that's that's kind of the vibe i don't know if you want i can go over like some of the well yeah we got some really cool there. folks that are showing it. for example thank you very much like a, we are celebrating this year the 30th anniversary of the power rangers the power rangers been around since 1993 and um, some of the we are having a big um, 30th anniversary, the official 30th anniversary um, panel down at San Diego Comic-Con down there. And some of the Rangers are going to make appearances. Uh, they're going to come. Oh, they're excited. I'm going to tell you, um, of course, Peter, Peter Adrian said so, so Darso. He's he was in he was in Ninja Steel Hyperforce. He was also in The Last of Us and Supergirl. Peter's going to be coming. He was the Blue Ranger and he was also oh, Marvin, right. the Red Ranger. Sulian Ward. He was TJ, the Red Ranger, and Power Rangers Turbo in space and Ninja Steel. And, of course, Mr. Walter Jones himself. He is the original Black Ranger. So excited. And Walter is like the Energizer Energizer Bunny. He has so much energy. He'll keep yeah, the party great. going all night. But, like, uh, you got so much talent. So many. And I'm sorry, I'm just a little bit of self-promotion there. Those guys are cool. But other than that, yeah. you've got, like, dozens and dozens of industry folks. Can you tell us a little bit about who's showing up? And then... Then Luke, I'll throw it back over to you. Well, you you guys get to do a little self promotion because you know it is <laughs> your your show. So, um, but uh, yeah, yeah, Walter, I've known for many years. He's awesome, uh, and the other Power Rangers. I'm looking forward to meeting them too. Um, but yeah, we've got guys. We've got like Rod Roddenberry, who for those who don't know, he's Gene Roddenberry's son, the guy who created Ooh. Star Trek, um, and he's the guy who's like the executive producer of the whole franchise now. So he's you know executive producer on Picard on uh, Discovery, Strange New Worlds, uh, Prodig- um, yeah, Prodigy, uh, a bunch of different ones. So Lower Decks. Um, so he's like, it's such an honor to have a guy like that uh, there. Uh, we're also going to have Ilya Salkind. 
Uh, and he's like the executive producer of like all the Superman movies, the whole oh, Superman fantastic. franchise. So that doesn't stink either. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I edited myself a little bit. Um, uh, why? Don't worry about it. <laughs> we've got uh, Stan Lee's Kamikaze uh, is going to be there. Um, you know, Stan Lee, of course, isn't part of it anymore, but it's the Los Angeles Comic Con people. Yep. Uh, all, like most of their top executives are going to be there. Um, for many years, we've also had uh, POW Entertainment uh, coming. They had some other stuff going on this year, so they couldn't make it. But actually, we're going to have Bob Sabuni, who used to be the chief marketing officer for Stanley's POW Entertainment. Uh, and also, he's an exec at Marvel. Uh, he's got his own film production company now, so he's a busy guy. But he's going to be there. Um, we're going to have Larry Kazanoff, who's um, you know, executive producer on... Awesome films like True Lies, uh, the whole Mortal Kombat movie franchise mm -hmm. by him. Um, I think Lego Star Wars also he did. Um, yeah. But, uh, you uh, have Tohuro Masu. I can't. Must have been he's Shredder in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the 2014 movie. That's pretty cool because this is a big year for for the the Turtles at Comic Con with the new movie coming out and everything. So that's it's right. a, kind of a big get there. That's really cool. Yeah, Toru is uh, he's a great guy too. He's very friendly, very approachable, and uh, and he's a shredder. So, uh, <laughs> and for any actors out there, we're going to have uh, some talent agents there, both uh, acting talent agents as well as voiceover, which of course is important in the Comic Con world. Mm -hmm. Talent agents from CESD, you know, they're actually a very pretty big, well known agency. Uh, a number of other agents also come and are, are just mingling low key in the crowd. They try to stay low key sometimes. Um, but if you're persistent and, and looking around, you can find them. Um, <laughs> and that, that is actually some advice I would give some people, you know, we'll go to my yeah. events and like, yeah, I walked around and I didn't get to meet the da 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 da. Well, did you know what they look like? No, I had no idea. Well, we got the internet. There's a thing called the internet. <laughs> find out what they look like. And then in five minutes, you can walk around and find whoever it is you're looking for. If you know what yeah. they look like. Jeez, so, really. Awesome. So uh, with tickets, like what are other are different packages or is it just one ticket or like what's, what's the cost and kind of um, different. Uh, yeah. So we've got like um, both general admission tickets, uh, which uh, get you in the event and you still get to meet and talk to everybody. Uh, the VIP tickets for those who uh, enjoy being on the red carpet and getting all the red carpet shots and doing all that. The VIP tickets give you priority to get on the red carpet and they get you in a uh, shorter wait in line, kind of get to more to the front. So it's uh, those are uh, $40 full price, uh, $30 full price for the general admission tickets. So for 10 bucks, you get in quicker and get on the red carpet. Um, but the cool thing is if you get them by tomorrow, uh, you can get 30% off of that um, for the Infilis Premium members. Uh, but even I'm giving a discount even to the general public who say, mm, to Infilis, don't sign up for a premium thing. I'm kidding. <laughs> we love it. Um, but uh, they still even get 10% uh, off. So, Cool. Awesome. Now, is there parking there or what do you recommend for people for parking or getting there? No, we actually, uh, there's $15 parking, which in Hollywood is wow. most unheard of. <laughs> uh, For people in Hollywood, that's a, that's a shocker right there. <laughs> uh, but actually, it's, there's a lot right next door so um, uh, to the event, and I'm blanking on their dress, but it's literally just to the left. Well, the of, Academy's uh, at 6021 Hollywood Boulevard, so it's right next door. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and so they've got $15 parking, get there early in case they fill up because with $15 parking, there may be not as many people taking Uber, you know, so. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, Jeff, we don't have a lot of time with you because we know you're busy, but I do want to ask you about what, what, how do people dress? What's the quote unquote dress code for this event? Because I know it's kind of different than your, your normal events. Yeah. Well, cosplay is, of course, always welcome. And we get some amazing cosplayers there. Uh, which is always fun. I'm just always inspired by their creativity and, and what they put together. Uh, but you don't have to come in cosplay, so no no stress. Uh, just anything cool, hip, sexy, you know. Yep. It's because I do a number of other events throughout the year, like a pre-Oscars and a pre-Emmys, and those are a little more elegant and kind of got to get dressed up for those. These can be more casual. It's just more of a party. So it can be casual as long as it's kind of cool and hip. Yeah. 
And Cheeseman, we've been before. If you want to tell tell folks kind of what, what it was like, what was it like for us when we were there? Well, it's a great place if you're doing cosplay to kind of try out, you know, your cosplay before going down. Like, uh, so like one year I dressed up like Abraham from Walking Dead and that got a lot of attention because I did the bat to the head. And that was before it was released that he was actually the one that got killed. I just predicted it was that, but it, that went over well, which I ended up doing at Comic-Con as well. So I definitely recommend if you have cosplay, it's a great place to, you know, try stuff out. Um, definitely, you know, great place to get like drinks and food and just the 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 vibe of the place is always a, a great part that you do and everything too. So it's, it's just feels very like artistic, feels very creative, feels like a party, you know? And, you know, obviously it, you said, you know, other people are there. So if, sometimes if you can't make it to Comic-Con, this is a way to experience it away from San Diego, if you're local to LA. Yeah. And, and the thing is like, and, and just like Luke said, the thing is so cool. It's, it's a party. It's a good party. But for those of us who are trying to be in the industry, like Luke and I were screenwriters and we're pod podcast web website folks, there's actors, talent agents, everything. Our buddy, Pat Jankowitz, I'm looking at the list. He's going to be there. He's a journalist for Starlog and Fangoria. Speaking of the, 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 and you've actually got the publisher. Of yeah. That's, I just saw that. That's super yeah. exciting. Yeah. Chris Speaking Gore. Like every year. Yeah, yeah, Chris, Chris Gore is going to be there from yeah. Film Threat Magazine. You've got a lot of the magazine, a oh, Geekscape podcast, Jonathan London. You got the um, uh, the, 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 the film festival. The, the the oh, I forget the name of the film festival. Yeah, the Geek Fest cool. Film Festival. <laughs> Bill Ostroff's going to be there. We've had him on the show a few times. It's a lot of people that we don't see very often, but we get to you know hang out with them. So, anyways, yeah. And actually, what I would recommend for everyone, if you want to see like. It'd be too long. It would take up the whole show, probably three of these shows, if we listed all the amazing oh, yeah. special guests we're going to have. But if you go to infolist.com, um, and then you'll see it'd be like the first or second posting. It'll be right near the top, pre-Comic-Con bash. Click on that, and you'll see the long, long list of the truly amazing special guests that you will get to meet one-on-one -on -one in person and hang and chat with and have a drink with um, and make a real connection. All right. Well, Jeff, I am so glad that you were able to carve out a little bit of time to be with us today. Luke, do you have anything left to ask him before we kind of jump off here? No, just uh, check it out, and we hope to see you there, everyone. Jeff, we can't wait to see you Thursday. Everybody, remember, go to infolist.com, get your tickets. Try to get – are you sold out of the VIP tickets yet, Jeff? Uh, we've still got uh, those left. Okay, cool. Uh, we may be sold out. Uh, before, cool. so I, I recommend the sooner. Go the today as soon as you see this podcast, go buy your tickets because there's a discount yeah. right now. So go get it, don't delay. Hey, Jeff, we can't wait to see it. Jeff, do you ever make it down to the convention itself? Uh, yeah, I've gone every year for like over a decade, awesome. probably more than that. So, yeah, I've got a lot. Of, it's great. I get to meet so many friends, catch up with people I haven't seen for a while, and, and meet new people, see all the amazing stuff, all the comic book artists. So it's always fun okay. down there. All right. Well, the con guys are going to see you this Thursday. Everybody else, we'll see you Thursday at Jeff Gunn's Info List pre Comic Con Bash Party. It's going to be a blast. See you later, We're guys. We'll see you all there. Bye bye. Thanks for listening to The Con Guy Show, the official program of theconguy.com. Find us on the Weeby Geeks Collective or anywhere you listen to podcasts. And now on sci fi.radio, Saturdays at 4 o'clock Eastern, 1 o'clock Pacific, both a.m. and p.m. That's 9 o'clock Greenwich. It's sci-fi for your Wi-Fi.